Nevertheless, we, we're grateful that y'all take the time out, as always, to join in with us uh, in this Bible study. And um, continually, that's, that's uh, a good character trait to have, to devote to something and, and commit to it. And uh, it get to the point where if you miss it, it feel like you're missing something, you know. Like you, oh, yeah. if you don't go to church, it, 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 it throw your whole week off. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh -huh. we um, this evening we're gonna be in uh, First Samuel chapter number thirty. First Samuel chapter number thirty. We're gonna be talking about the the effort it takes to to overcome, and we often pray about things, and we want to put things in God's hands, but a lot of times God putting things in our hands. It, it's it's things we have to do as believers to to overcome. Now, ultimately, yes, he gives us the power. He is the source. But at the end of the day, you're in the middle of the situation you're dealing with. You're, you're the one that's facing these giants. You're the one facing these obstacles. You're the one facing these mountains. And that's why he tells us if you have the faith, you know, even the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain. Who can speak to this mountain? You. You can speak to this mountain. And it, speak to this mountain that it be removed. And it'll be, you know, moved. You can speak to the sycamore tree. Who can speak to the sycamore tree? You can. And it'll be uprooted. But the problem with a lot of us is... You know, and it takes wisdom when you live in, you know, the life of a believer. It, it takes wisdom. And you can read in the Bible where the Bible tells us to wait on the Lord. You know, and a lot of us, we wait on the Lord, but when the Lord gives us the strength, when he gives us the power, we don't do nothing with it. So <laughs> it, it takes wisdom on how to, how to, you know, navigate through and, and deal with certain circumstances that you're dealing with. Um, and tonight we're going to be looking at um, a situation here with David. Um, the Bible tells us, you know, uh, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Well, then you, you go to... Uh, I believe it's Ephesians or Galatians. It tells you to put on the whole arm of God. So <laughs> which one is it? <laughs> is God going to fight the battle or are you, you going to stand in the battle with the whole arm of God? You going to stand, you know, what, which one is it? So it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom. And, you know, to fight this spiritual battle, it's, it's spiritual warfare. We got to understand when is, is God's battle and when is ours. And when he's going to use us in the battle versus when he is going to just supernaturally and divinely conquer the enemy. All right. And he does it both ways. But how do we know the difference? How do we know the difference? How do we know when it's time for us to, you know, stand in there and, and, and you know, and fight Goliath, you know, with just a sling and, and five stones? How, how do we know? How do we know? And a lot of people, a lot of people facing things this evening, they're fighting the battle, but this is the battle God's supposed to fight. And a lot of people in situations where they're not fighting the battle, but this is their battle to fight. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you don't understand the, the will of God, if you don't understand you know, the different 
times when God going to use you or when you got to stand back and, and see the, you know, the Bible says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So you got to, you got to have wisdom. You got to pray to God for wisdom and understanding, you know, his divine knowledge to help you in these battles, in these situations that you're dealing with. Um, ultimately, you're in it for a purpose and a reason. At the end of the day, God want to see how you manage in this storm. How, how you, what are you going to do in the midst of this? You know, facing this. What you going to do? You going to fold and just get an enemy, you know, authority over your life and, and just have his way with you? Meanwhile, you know, you just praying and crying till God do something. But how you know that God ain't saying stand? Stand with your chest poked out, trusting in the living God. You, but again, we all been through battles. We 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 done um, done the wrong tactic. <laughs> we done fought with the wrong tactic. We done took a um, a pea shooter to a a, a, a gunfight, <laughs> and that ain't gonna work. All right, so. Um, this evening we're gonna uh try to identify. We're gonna the main thing the the main thing is is when you are dealing with overwhelming situations. When you are dealing with over overwhelming situations, you don't ever want to fight or um try to fight the enemy out of pure anger and emotion. That that's not how we fight this battle. We fight the enemy by faith. Because if you are angry or you, you acting out of impulse and, and, and just emotion, the emotion of the, of the, of the situation, nine times out of ten, you're going you gonna to make the wrong choices in that fight. You're going to make the wrong choice. You're, gonna, you're not going to win that fight. Um, sometimes you just got to breathe. And assess the situation. Let, let's see what's going on. Really. Alright. Uh. And a lot of times God allow us in a situation that seems so overwhelming. Till we, we reach a conclusion like. I can't get through this one. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we tempted to believe. You know because the devil is a liar. We tempted to believe that God ain't fair. And that. You know, he put us in this and he let this thing happen to us and he know it ain't no way for me to get out of out of this. But it's just trying your faith, brothers and sisters. It's trying your faith. And the Bible says the trying of your faith faith works patience. Alright? So in the midst of our situation, and as we read this story this evening. They're dealing with a specific situation, but spiritually, we're going to take the principle of what's going on here and apply it to our life so we can deal with any, any obstacle, any challenge, any, anything that arises up in our life to try to knock us off course. There, there'll be some, uh, satanic attacks on the church of God. And I'm going to tell you when they come the most serious from the enemy is when you really on the right track, when you really doing what God asks asks of you, when when you are really in the will of God. That's when the enemy is going to attack the worst, the hardest, the fiercest. That's when you're going to pull it on, but you got to be able to stand. You got to understand how to navigate through the challenges of life, cause life gonna always throw something at you. All right. So, uh, in uh, First Samuel chapter number thirty, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna pull out some uh, points here. We we not again. We ain't gonna be able to cover the whole thing, but I'm gonna try to bring out some principles that you can apply to your spiritual battles, your spiritual fights that you have. Um, the Bible say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All right. But but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So we got to learn how to fight these battles. All right. 
and we got to learn how when it's when it's our time you know to take the battle to the enemy and we got to we got to understand when is our time to stand still and see the salvation of God when it's time for us to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We got to understand when it's time for uh, us to proclaim and declare that this battle is not mine. This battle is the Lord. All right. We got we to gotta have some wisdom. So stop, fight, stop fighting battles that, that's not yours to fight. All, all of them, you know, God allowed to happen in your life, but and God's going to be right there, you know, to bring you through it. But your words ain't always going to give you the victory. You know, your, your knowledge ain't always going to give you the victory. You know, your, even your experiences that you didn't experience in the past. God will allow you to face things you ain't never seen before. So your experiences is not what's going to give you the victory. It's your faith in God. It's, 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 it's making God inclusive in the thing. All right, so you can know how you can fight this battle. All right, so let's look at this story. Um, verse, verse number one, First Samuel chapter 30, verse one. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day and the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. And so David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, their daughters were taken captives. All right. So Ziklag was a city, the city of David. And the Amalekites were the, the enemies of the Israelites, all right? And they, they waged war on Ziklag while David and his men was off in battle, okay? So they came in when the, when the, when the city was vulnerable. Don't that sound like the enemy? <laughs> Don't that sound like the enemy? Uh, See, this is a spiritual battle. Oh, yeah. When, when is the... When is the enemy? See, he ain't gonna try to. He ain't gonna try to pour it on you while you at your strongest. But he gonna try. He, he gonna try you at your weakest moment. <laughs> when you most vulnerable. And the reason being because he all he already feel like if I can if I can just put one more straw on that camel's back, I can make them break. I can make them doubt God. I can make them turn their back on God. I can make them quit right here in this moment because they already had their wits in. They already want to quit. They already done had enough. I done, enough is enough. I can't take no more. And that's when the enemy going to come in. He ain't going to come in when you got your full arm on. <laughs> when you know, you know, when you know, you know, you can fight this battle. When you know he he he's not gonna do that. He gonna do it when you when you when your mind is off of God. You you know them them times, and, and it's not even you know all the time. It's not even you know a a a, a hardship that you're going through. Sometimes we we in a place of of plenty, and we 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 kind of drift away from God in our mind, in our commitment to Him, in our you know our faithfulness to Him. We don't pray like we used to because we got we got money now. <laughs> we we gone. We on vacation. We 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 doing it up. We you know we doing it up. So and, and beware. That's why you got to stay consistent. You you can never let your guard down. Whether you you all the way up or you all the way down, you can you got to stay prayed up and spiritual. You got to stay focused on Jesus Christ. You can't never let your guard down. Because the enemy will slip in there on you while your mind is awake. The Bible says, um, the Bible says in, in the New Testament, in, in a couple of the, uh, the gospels, 
It says um, a man planted some wheat in his field, but while men slept, when they went to sleep, the enemy came in and sold tares in the field. See, the, the enemy couldn't do that while, the, while they was woke. He did it while they was asleep. And, and spiritually, we go to sleep from time to time. We go missing from time to time. We go away from time to time. And that's when the enemy slip in. I ain't talking about leaving your, you know, leaving town. I'm talking about in your own mind, in your own heart. You know, uh, I can miss, I can miss church this Sunday. Uh, I'll go next time. And so that's the beginning. That's the beginning of a, a, a character slip up that people don't realize. Uh, you know, when, when you start half doing it, that's the enemy love that. Because now you, 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 he, he getting his foot in the door and you not, when, when you're not as committed and dedicated to God, you know, when you first born again, you, it's like you looking for stuff to do for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Strangers you meet, you want to tell them about your new savior. Everywhere you go, every service they have, it don't matter if it, you go to a nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, you want to be at the two o'clock, the six o'clock. You want to be at, you know, all week long if they have them revival. You want to be in God's house. Oh, I'm so, I'm so full of joy. But then you start getting lazy. Then, you know, I ain't got to go. I ain't got to read the Bible. I pray tomorrow night. And so then just like, just like David and his men went away in battle, sometimes in our own commitment to Christ, we drift away. And that's when the enemy comes in. What did the enemy do? The enemy came in and burnt the city to the ground. <laughs> Fortunately, see, the grace of God is, was that action even when the enemy was attacking the city. He could have killed all the wives and children. But the Bible says he burnt, they burned the city to the ground, but they kept the women and the children as hostages and, and took them away with them. So with that in mind, with that in mind, even when you in hardship, the Bible teaches us in everything, give thanks. Because brothers and sisters, listen, even at, even though things may be hard in your life, you got to understand things could be worse. And no matter how hard you think you got it, somebody is dealing with something much worse than you are. That's why you got to be, you got to give thanks and you got to understand that God is still on the throne and he's able to turn the situation around. You may not be able to. This may not be a, a, a battle you can, you know, you can fight. Or it may be one you can fight. Let's see. <laughs> Let's read the story. So the Bible says um, uh, the Amalekites burned the city to the ground and, and took their sons and wives and daughters and took them captive. Verse number four says, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. <laughs> Again, don't that sound like, listen, you ain't never been to Ziklag. <laughs> don't even, don't even know where that on the map. But don't that sound like some spiritual things that happen in our life? Haven't you experienced a Ziklag moment? When the devil came in and attacked what you, what belongs to you and, and, and just, you know, cr it just crushed you to the point where you cried, you lifted up your, your voice and you cried all night long until you couldn't even cry no more. Uh. These are times when people are doing that, you know, so often until, you know, the Bible says this. The Bible says in, in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. And so uh, people are seeing so much violence and so much, so much hatred. People are experiencing it so much until their heart is like, 
it's growing cold. It's like, you know, you experience wow. something over and over and over. It's like if, if you eat something every day, don't you get tired of eating that? It just ain't that good. It make, the first time it was really good. Second time it might have been all right. But you keep eating it all the time. You get used to it and it ain't got the same flavor no more. <laughs> and it's like that with a lot of things. And, you know, when people experience pain after pain after pain, their heart starts to shift. You know, the first couple of times it, it kind of hit them hard and it's like, oh my God, what I'm going to do? But, you know, after experiencing a whole lot of pain, like your heart starts to shift. You do something to your psyche, your, your mentality starts to change. But here, the Bible says, and, and David, I, I, take note of this, David and his men were conquerors. I want to throw that out there. They were conquerors. They didn't, they didn't go out there to fight battles and lose because why? They went out there fighting in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I want to throw that out there. So, so, so when you, when you suffer loss, when you, when you used to winning and you suffer loss, it, it, it do something to you. It do something to you. And see, we as believers, the Bible teaches us that we are victorious. The victory has already been won through Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us we're not only conquerors, we're more than conquerors through, through him that loved us. <laughs> the Bible teaches us we will win. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So what about, what about when we get in a place and it looked like we suffering loss. We done lost. Huh. How does it feel to somebody that's used to winning everything? Everything they put their hand on, they win. They succeed. It, it, it's blessed. Huh. To now experiencing something in your life where it feel like everything you touch is failing. Or you're in a place in your life and it feels like you are not successful. You don't have the victory. You're not winning. See, that do something to you. The Bible says these, these victorious warriors, David and his men, the Bible said when they came to that city and saw what was going on, what has happened, what the Amalekites did, when they saw it, the Bible said they lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever cried till your pillow was wet with tears? And that ain't just a song verse. <laughs> till your tears just dried up. That's a that's a bad situation to be in. You know, some people tell you, even at funerals, some, some people listen to the lies of the enemy and talk about you don't have to cry. How you gonna tell somebody how to how to deal with their sorrow? God, God allows us to cry. Jesus wept. <laughs> so it gonna be times in your life when you when you release that strain, that stress, that pressure by tears flowing down your eyes. All right, but but this is what I want y'all to understand. Even though you have won a lot of fights, the enemy gonna come in. God gonna allow them, like just like Job. And, and it don't necessarily mean you lost. The enemy wants you to believe you, 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 you have lost. See, just like Job, he had everything going for him. Everything was all right. He prayed. He prayed and covered, covered his children with prayer. He prayed and, 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 and everything he did was blessed. But then Satan came in. And Job said this. He said, the thing I feared the most has happened to me. Hmm. Lord have mercy. We know the story of Job. I'm not going to tell the story of Job. I'm just trying to make a point here. Just like, just like David and his men felt, that's how Job felt. I ain't never experienced nothing like this in my life. God, I'm faithful to you. And, and this is what you're going to allow? 
But Job declared, I know my Redeemer lives. <laughs> naked I came into the world, naked I'm going to leave. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Job said, uh, Job said, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God gives and the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and no matter how bad it got, no matter how it seemed like he was suffering defeat, he didn't lose his faith. He, he kept the faith knowing that God could turn this thing around. Now, even though they wept all night long until they couldn't weep no more, let's read the story, see what happened. The Bible says, verse 6, David was greatly distressed. Not, not only was he faced with what has happened to him and his men and his family and, and his city. Not only was he distressed by that, but, but verse 6 says he was greatly distressed because the people talked about killing him. He, they pointed the blame at David, say, this is your fault. Now, let, let's pause another, you know, let's pause again. And we're going to talk to some real people, real people dealing with some real life situations. When you, when you feel like you have lost the battle, as if that's not enough, and then everybody pointing the finger at you. <laughs> Now they don't want nothing to do with you. The Bible says they're looking at stoning him, which was, you know, a form of um, execution. This is your fault, David. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. It's like when you're going through certain situations, and, and that's why I said you can't, you can't navigate through your hardships trusting in your emotions. You want to get rid of your leader as if it's his fault. It's like when you're going through trouble like that, it's like you you looking for somebody to blame. Somebody got to be the, the blame for this. But do we ever look at Satan do we ever look at the devil in the middle of it? He's the true enemy. He's that he's that uh principality. He's that spiritual wickedness in high places. He is the one that that wants to steal, kill and destroy. He's the one that want to tear down everything you built up. He's the one that want to take everything from you that, that God has given you. Look at him. The Bible says, the Bible says, uh, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. It says this, resist the devil and he'll flee. The problem is we want to blame everything and everybody else. Except the devil. We don't want to aim at him. And this is what I'm trying to show y'all this evening. He's at the He's at the bottom of all of it. He's at the root of of, of all that. And at, at some point in our life, we got to learn how to fight against him. And we got to learn and have knowledge and understanding on, you know. When God is trying to strengthen us in the battle and when it's time for him, for God to stand for and for us to trust him in it. Because God, see, God can straighten out stuff, you know, while we sleeping, God working on people, <laughs> you know, but I want to continue. Let me continue with the story. They wanted to stone uh, David. Because their their soul was grieved, it, they were so hurt. It was down in in the in their soul. 
for every man for his son and for his daughter. But look, look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Y'all see that? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when, when, even when, just like, just going back to Job, when Job start going through the hardest thing in his life, Satan was at the bottom of it, all right, because Satan went to God and said, I bet you if I do this and this and this, Job will curse you to your face. You know, so he was at the root of everything else that was happening, all the tragedies and all that that was happening in his life, in Job's life. So when Job started going through, the Bible says his wife said, curse God and die. The, the, the one, you know, his other had, the one that completed him, the one that he believed in, probably, you know, consoled him. At some point, but when it got too terrible, she said, curse God and die. If that wasn't enough, his three friends who he depended on, who, who he, you know, confided in, who he, you know, trusted in. They came and said, Joe, you must have did something wrong. It's, it's your fault. You must have did something wrong for your God to allow this in your life. And this is the same picture. I'm pulling that principle out because I want y'all to see. We are not much different, brothers and sisters. In 2022, things happen in our life just like that. But you got to see that Satan is at the bottom of it. He at the root of it. That's who we need to be focusing on because that's who we need to get rid of. That's who we need to defeat. That's who we need to stand against in the midst of what we are going through. All right. So the Bible said with all this commotion going on and everybody coming up against him, blaming him and, you know, wanting to kill him and all that. The Bible said David encouraged himself. How? In the Lord, his God. Right. David ain't run up the hill and get drunk. Man, let me drink these problems away. <laughs> you know, he ain't go smoke it away. He ain't go party his problems away. He ain't going to sleep, sleep around, you know, try to get his problems off his back. Try to do something to consume his mind to, you know, so that his problems would just miraculously go away. No. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He began to talk to his God. He began to pray to his God. He began to think about how many times God has already brought him through. How many battles he has already fought. So that's my strength. That's my trust. That's where I need to go in this situation. Because this is overwhelming God. I need you at this hour. I need you in this situation. Lord what must I do? The Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. See a lot of us when we go through things. We stop up there in verse number 4. We still, we still weeping. We still weeping, but, but where does your encouragement come from? And a lot of times, brothers and sisters, even though you expect it to come from other people, maybe that ain't the situation God wants you to hear encouraging words from other people. So you got to learn how to get in touch with God yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't let this thing, don't let it, the enemy rob them of their you know, their families and their, their, their riches and all that and strip them to, you know, to the core, rob them. But don't let the enemy rob you of your joy. <laughs> don't let the enemy rob you of the things spiritually that God has placed in you uh, by the simple fact that you've been born again and you have his spirit. The fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, and peace, faith, long-suffering. Temperance, all of that. See, the Holy Ghost rests in you, abides in you, because when situations like this come up, that's when the Holy Ghost gets get into action and say, you know what? I give you peace in the midst of this storm. I'm giving you joy. It ain't nothing to be happy about, but you got joy knowing that God is still in control. And see, like I was saying, yeah. they didn't know what happened. They didn't know whether their wives and children was alive or dead. They didn't know. All they know was the city was burned to the ground and everything was gone. Y'all with me? So 
what David did encouraged himself in the Lord. And, 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 and brothers and sisters, listen, no matter how hard the situation you're dealing with is, you got to understand this. God is in control. You got to give God an opportunity to turn that thing around for you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So the Bible says, verse number seven, I'm, I'm trying to speed on through this thing because we're going to run out of time. But David said, after he encouraged himself in the Lord, the Bible said, uh, he said to the priest, um, bring me the ephod, which was a, a priestly garment. And he brought the ephod to David and, and David put the ephod on, which was a priestly garment. Okay. So, um, when he put this priestly garment on, <laughs> it was time to go in action. <laughs> what, what kind of action? Uh -huh. Now, the, 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 the first, the first impulse the people had was to kill David. And the first impulse they had was to cry. Uh, as a result of what they was experiencing. Go fool. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm just saying it just strikes me that when we experience overwhelming situations, we react the same way. <laughs> yeah. I, unless I'm just different than somebody else. When you when you experience overwhelming situations, you 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 tempted to act out of control. Your emotions get the best of you. You you start saying stuff that you really don't want to say because you don't know how to you don't know how to embrace this. You don't know how to how to experience what you're going through because you never experienced it before. But the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah, he cried. But when the tears start falling, guess what? Now it's time to do something else. All right? You can't cry yourself through these spiritual battles that you got to deal with. They're not just going to miraculously go away, brothers and sisters. And don't pray until you get numb to it and accept it. You know, it's something to be done in the situation. <laughs> Lord, hammer us. Yeah. I hope y'all... Yeah. You know, y'all can share this because that that's good. You ain't got to write it down. You can just go back and push re replay and just play it back over because this stuff, this is good stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's just not going to go away. And don't get numb to it and accept it in your life. David went to God. He, he put on the priestly garment. Okay. In other words, we got to get in the spirit. We got to get in the spirit about this. I can't forget who's in charge. God is in charge. I'm David. I, I, you know, I lead these men in the battle and we come out victorious. But ultimately, God, you the one give me the power to win these battles. So I got to talk to you in this situation. At, at first glance, all the men thought this hopeless. This hopeless. There's no coming back from this. But David, somewhere in his spirit, he felt like, you know, if God says hopeless is hopeless, ain't nothing we can do. But God ain't said that yet. <laughs> Let's see what God say about it. And brothers and sisters, listen, take your situation in, into prayer, into your prayer room. Don't take it to all your buddies and, and people that ain't godly, people that's, you know, serving other gods. And, 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 and they're going to give you counsel that, that ain't even godly. They're going to tell you to do stuff in this situation that you ought not be doing. They're going to tell you stuff that might have worked for them, but this ain't their battle. This is yours. All right. So go to God in prayer. The Bible says, David, listen, verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord. Y'all see that? He inquired at the Lord. He wanted to know. He had questions. And see, older folks used to say, don't question God. But you, you got to understand what they were saying. When God says, this is my will, don't question him. Just do his will. But if you, if you, as a human being, we don't know everything. If it's something you don't know, 
or you don't know what direction to go, how you going to get an answer unless you ask the Lord? He said, ask. Uh -huh. <laughs> so how you ain't going to question God? You, you, you ask him a question, uh -huh. but don't question his will. Uh -huh. When he give you the answer, don't question what he's telling you. You know, just do what he say do, and, and you're going to come out on the winning side. All right. So David, he asked the Lord, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And the, and the Bible said, God answered him, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And verse 9 said, so David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Bezer where those that were left behind stayed. All right, so look, <laughs> this, this is what I want to get to you, brothers and sisters, listen. And I'm going to have to do this in about five minutes because this is like the conclusion of the matter. We can identify with the hardship. And and a problem in a lot of churches is that a, a lot of preachers will raise up the problems and we can identify, oh, it's rock the church. It'll rock the church if we talk about problems all day. You know, everybody can say, hey, man, you're going through a storm. Everybody, hey, man, you got problems in your life. Hey, man, everybody got problems. Everybody can agree with that. Everybody be shouting. But... The problem is they leave us with the problem. We go home with the problem. What's the solution? <laughs> I, I know I got the problem. What is the solution? Number one, David encouraged himself in the Lord. His God. In other words, he had a relationship with God. He, no, don't miss that. He said David encouraged himself in the Lord. His God. The Lord is my shepherd. Y'all done heard it before. <laughs> the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's my God. We got relationship. So, you know, don't get stuck in your troubles crying till you can't cry no more. Because I guarantee you, you know, after you done cried till you can't cry no more, some about them tear ducts, they'll fill back up. And you'll start crying again if that's all you're going to do. If that's all you're going to do. I ain't going to tell you how long to cry. But the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. At some point, you got to get past the tears, all the emotion. You got to get past, all you know, the anger of what happened. You got to get past, you know, the frustration of what's going on. You got to get past it. And, and somehow get to that point where you, you get to God in prayer. The Bible says, David inquired, he asked God, shall I pursue after this truth? And if I, see that's two different questions. Shall I pursue after this truth? Is it worth it to go after them? They could be done kill everybody. It could be pointless to go after them. Y'all, y'all see that? And, and so what we want to do, we want to go after somebody. We all, you know, we want to retaliate. We got to get the last word. We, we, we going to, you know, you don't know I'm here. You know, I've been here because <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So, but should we go after them? The Bible, uh, not, not the Bible, don't, don't, not the Bible, but I heard a, a, a proverb one time. It ain't in Proverbs in the Bible, but it said a wise man once said nothing. <laughs> a wise man once said nothing. Sometimes it ain't it ain't nothing else to say. Let the Lord fight that battle. But go to God and see what he says about the situation. Shall I pursue them? Shall I go after them? Everything the devil done stole is not for you to go back and recover because some of the things that the devil took from us, maybe God wanted him to take them. <laughs> you you just don't know. But how do we know what, what to pursue and how do we know what not to pursue? We got to ask God. The Bible says, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake them? See, that's two different story, uh, questions. If yes, if you do want me to pursue after them, Lord, 
Will I overtake them? I want to know how this thing going to turn out. <laughs> I want to know. I got to know, Lord. And the Bible said, listen, y'all got to take stop taking stuff. And, and y'all already know, I don't, I don't preach or teach out of cliches. So I don't like, I don't like, really like saying cliches because you hear it so much till it don't have no meaning. So I like to change it up. I like to be, you don't know what, what I'm going to say. <laughs> I ain't got no punchline. All right. So, uh, the Bible said, the, the Bible, uh, the Bible teaches us if we pray, God will hear and answer our prayer. Don't miss that. Uh -huh. David prayed yeah. and the Bible said God heard it. How you know he heard it? Because the Bible said in verse 8, he answered him. That's a blessing. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, that's a blessing. Don't that sound like us though? Have you ever prayed to God about a situation that, that, that seemed like it was too hard for you to, to handle? Did you pray about it? And did you hear the answer come from God? Listen, the Bible said he answered him, pursue, yes, pursue, go after them. For you shall surely overtake them and without, without fail, recover all. So that let, that let David know, listen, there's hope. That let David know, you know, it's worth it to go, to go. And and so listen, this this is what I want to leave y'all with. And and again, like I was saying, I'm trying to use this as a as a template so you can take the principle and apply it to your life and how you dealing with your situation. So what if God would have said no? That would have been the end of the story, end of discussion. Because David made up in his mind when when he put on that priestly garment that he was gonna be uh, obedient to whatever God said. When he put on that ephod, that priestly garment, that was saying, Lord, I'm, I'm submitting myself to you. I'm giving myself to you. I'm sacrificing. A, I'm making a living sacrifice to you, God. Whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. So if God said, don't pursue, then David wouldn't have went after them. But see, the problem with a lot of us, we don't get the, the answer we think we ought to get from God. And so when God say, don't go, we going back anyway. <laughs> and and it, it don't work out like that. When, when God say, sit still, be still and know that I'm God, we steady moving. We, we, we steady got our hand on it. And that's why we fighting a losing battle. And, and sometimes God will say, yeah, go. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. And we'll just sit there like a knot on the log talking about we waiting on the Lord. He already gave you the answer. The Bible say when God answered him, told him pursue, overtake, and recover all. Verse 9 says this. So David went. And the same man that wanted to kill him, God done turned their mind and they went with him. <laughs> Boy, you can't beat God. I'm telling you, if you just if you make God inclusive in everything you do, and you be obedient to what He tells you to do, you gonna you gonna fight a winning battle. You gonna come out victorious. We can't stop things from happening in our life, no matter how careful you are. You know, you can raise your children as best you know how. They'll still grow up and be something else. You can work as hard as you can on your job. They'll still fire you. You can exercise and eat right. You still get some kind of cancer. You know, you can't stop things from happening to you in your life. But one thing you can do, you can include God in, in everything you do in your life. And everything you, you experience, you're going to come out with the victory. And God going to get the glory. That's what I'm trying to teach y'all this evening. I don't know what title to put on it when they put the title on it on YouTube, but it's something along the lines of uh, letting the Lord fight your battles and, and you knowing when you're going to fight your battles. <laughs> Having the wisdom on how to fight your battles. Something along them lines. So, I'm going to stop here.
But I again, I thank y'all for joining in and prayerfully God has said something in your life that uh, will encourage you in the in the situation that you're dealing with. Um, it may look like a losing battle. But brothers and sisters, you got to give God a chance to work the thing out in your life. And you got to be obedient. When he tells you yay or nay, when he tells you to go or stay, you got to be obedient to what he says and watch him work that thing out for you. Lord have mercy. Y'all have a blessed evening. And again, I love you, but God loves you much, much more than I. Have a blessed evening.